Thanks so much, Dallas, for joining me this morning. I hope you had a great weekend and a great Mother's Day. Today I get to talk to Dara Torres. You know she's an Olympic champion, but we're going to see what she's talking about today. Dara, what's going on? Good morning. How are you? I'm wonderful. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Uh, I am actually an ambassador for Voices of Meningitis, trying to spread the word about how important it is to vaccinate your kids against this deadly disease. And so I'm visiting communities throughout the country, swimming 24 laps uh, to symbolize how quickly meningococcal meningitis could potentially take a life. And, you know, although rare, it can otherwise kill a, a healthy child within 24 hours. So that's a symbolization of why I'm going around and, and uh, swimming these 24 laps and trying to educate parents about the, how important it is to vaccinate your kids. Okay, and you brought a guest with you today. Uh, let me speak with her so she can tell us from her perspective. Okay, yes, this is Beth Maddie, and, and she's on the National Association of School Nurses. Yes, I'm a school nurse. Um, and I'm here to talk to you about how to educate children on the meningococcal meningitis prevention. What do we need to, uh, to tell our kids, or is this being done in school for us, Beth? Um, well, when it's being done in school, um, hopefully the um, school nurses are educating your students and giving information. But mainly what we really are, want to target is moms. We just did a recent survey um, that showed that two out of three moms had little or no knowledge of, of the CDC recommendations for vaccine. So what we want people to know is that there's a vaccine available for meningococcal meningitis and that um, children need to have the first dose at age 11 and a booster dose again at age 16. That sounds good. We'll get a place where we can send our listening audience at the end. Thank you so very much, Beth. Mm -hmm. Dara, let me ask you. So what allows you to lend the power of your name? Because you are powerful. You're the fastest woman in America. So when you lend your name to something, that means something. Well, it does mean something. You know, I have an eight-year-old daughter, and I have 14-year-old stepkids. And when I went to my daughter's health care provider last year, I really wanted to know more about it. We I had a teammate back in college who contracted it, and they didn't really educate us about it. They just gave us antibiotics, tested us to make sure we were okay, and then we were on our way. And, you know, it's like Beth said, two out of three moms, uh, after a survey was done, didn't know barely anything about the prevention of meningococcal meningitis. And so I just feel like it's so important to get that message out. I mean, can you imagine if your child can contra contract it? It can otherwise kill your child that ended up healthy, you know, within 24 hours. And that's very, very scary. And so we just want to get that message out to moms. Where can my listening audience go on the web and find more information and become more educated? Well, voicesofmeningitis.org has lots of information for your parents and your listeners, and I highly recommend that they check it out. Okay, Beth, I want to ask you one more time. Give us once again a brief synopsis of what it is or what we need to look for. Uh, for meningococcal meningitis, it's a bacterial infection uh, which, can, which includes swelling of the um, meninges of the spinal cord in the brain. It can give, if you contract the illness, it can give flu-like symptoms, headache, high fever, stiff neck, a rash, but the problem is that that mimics other symptoms. And as Dara mentioned, within 24 hours it can cause death. So parents may not even realize how ill their child is. And even if they do have treatment, there still are serious consequences. So that's why it's just so important for us to make sure that moms know this, that, to know that if there's a vaccine available, that they should get it at age 11, and then get the booster dose at age 16, because moms also weren't aware that, that once they had the first dose that they needed the second dose. Let me ask you, do adults need it? If you've got it as, you, if you get the early dose, do you still need it as an adult? Well, the, the group that's at higher risk, one of the higher risk groups are the adolescents, the teens and adolescents. And so that's the group that is targeted with the vaccine. So they do not, that's what we're doing now is to target the group um, within that six, the 11 to 21 year old age group. And the reason it's targeted is because Kids, they're always around in close quarters. They share utensils. They kiss. Uh, it's just much easier for them to contract it in, in situations like that. That is. Well, ladies, I want to thank you so very much for bringing this to our awareness. I hope people listen up. I hope they take action. Thank you so very much. I really appreciate it, Dara Torres and the nurse Beth. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.